Aloha, kakahiaka, kako. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending this Noted Scholar series presented by UBC GRSJ Institute. Today, we will be talking to uh, Hokulani Aikau and Bernadette Gonzalez about their work on creating detours, a decolonial guide to Hawaii. If you are unfamiliar with their work or have not seen it, it looks like this. And again, I wanna thank both Hokulani and Bernadette for being here. Thank you, Pilar and um, Class 500 for uh, bringing us to the Institute. UBC currently occupies the land and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh communities. While we engage in honoring land acknowledgements, we must understand that is merely enough. As students, faculty, staff, and position within an institution of learning, it is our responsibility to educate ourselves and respect the indigenous people of this land. I am grateful to share space with my cousins of Turtle Island and offer peace as we continue today's lesson. So I will now give a brief introduction on both of our speakers. It is an honor and a privilege to um, introduce both Hokulani Aikau and Bernadette Gonzalez. Hokulani K. Aikau is a Kanakoivi professor at the University, University of Victoria in the Indigenous Governance Program. Aikau is an interdisciplinary scholar with training in American studies and sociology and teaching experience in political science, indigenous politics, native Hawaiian politics, and Pacific Island Studies. She has received fellowships from the Ford Foundation and the MacArthur Foundation and research grants from the UH Manoa Sea Grant Program, the Censors Institute, the Hawaii Council for the Humanities, and NSF. She has published three books, A Chosen People, A Promised Land, Mormonism and Race in Hawaii, Feminist, Gen or Feminist Waves, Feminist Generational Cultures, Academy. 1968 to 1998, and Detours, A Decolonial Guide to Hawaii, co-edited with Bernadette V. Gonzalez. Uh, she, with Bernadette V. Gonzalez, she edits the Detours series with Duke University Press. Her next full-length monograph, Becoming Hoa with Aina, Returning People and Practices to Heia, is an ethnography of a wetland restoration project in Heia, Oahu. Aikau has served as associate editor of American Quarterly, currently serves on the editorial advisory board for Mormon Studies Review, and serves in editorial boards for book series at the University of Arizona Press and the University of Hawaii Press. While at the University of Utah, Aikau served as director of the Pacific Study Island Studies Program and with funding from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, created new curriculum and research opportunities for Pacific Islander students. Thank you, Dr. Aikau, for being with us today. Vernadette Gonzalez is Professor of American Studies and Director of the Honors Program at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Her areas of research include studies of tourism and militarism, transnational cultural studies, feminist theory, post-colonial studies and cultural studies with a focus on Asia and the Pacific. She has a PhD in ethnic studies from the University of California, Berkeley with a designated emphasis in women, gender and sexuality. Her most recent book, Empire's Mistress, starring Isabel Rosario Cooper is an exploration of the intimacies of imperial geopolitics through the life story of a mixed race vaudeville and film actress and sometimes mistress of General Douglas MacArthur. She is co-editor with Hokulani K. Aikau of Detours, a decolonial guide to Hawaii, which curates alternative place-based narratives, art, and itineraries that present a decolonial archive, a vision for life in Hawaii. Detours now anchors a book series with Duke University Press with volumes on Guam, Palestine, Puerto Rico, Okinawa, Singapore, and other state sites in development. Her first book, Securing Paradise, 
Terrorism and Militarism in Hawaii and the Philippines, won the Association for Asian American Studies Book Award for the Best Book in Cultural Studies, published in 2013. In 2016, she co-edited with Jana K. Lipman and Teresa Teiva an American quarterly special issue on the convergences of tourism and militarism. Her other published work can be found in several collections, including Tourism Geopolitics, Making the Empire Work, Mobile Desires, Transnational Crossroads, as well as in journals such as Journal of Tourism History, Shima, Radical History of You, the Journal of Sustainable Tourism, and Critical Ethnic Studies. She is currently serving as the director of the University Honors Program. And we welcome you, Bernadette, Dr. Gonzalez, to our talk today. A little bit about the Noted Scholar series that we are here. The speaker series offers a, di a dynamic space for exchange and introduces to our faculty, students, and invited guests the work of noted scholars from the Social Justice Institute, GRSJ, UBC, locally, nationally, and internationally. The interdisciplinary series aims to feature scholars, critical ideas, and creative work at radical edges of scholarly, artistic, and activist work. The series fosters critical and creative dialogue on current questions, theoretical and methodological approaches, and practice interventions around social justice. This year, the series will focus on broader questions related to social justice and epistemic justice while featuring other knowledges outside Europe and North America's geopolitical borders. So today's format, we will, um, after this portion, the two authors will discuss um, what this work means to them and then they'll have a discussion amongst themselves. After the discussion amongst themselves, we will um, have time for questions and answers. Um, it'll probably be at the last like 15 minutes or so. So if you have any questions, um, please, please feel free to add them in the chat and we will get to that at the end of um, their discussion today. So with that being said, I will uh, like to give the floor to Hokulani and Bernadette or Dr. Aikau and Dr. Gonzalez. Mahalo, Pawahi. Thank you for those introductions. Sorry, I was having some technical issues. Hold on a second. Sure. All right. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much for this invitation to share um, about the Detours book. I know Hoku and I are thrilled to be um, introducing this project uh, in your side of the world. Um, and hope we're, I, I think we're both hoping that somebody will take up a Detours, British Columbia Detours Vancouver. Um, so we'll get started right away because we want to make sure we get to this stuff. Um, so... So this project um, began from a realization at a conference that there was a substantial body of exciting work um, on Hawaii that was actively reimagining and describing the archipelago away from its most dominant formative narrative as a tourist destination. Hoku and I had been wanting to do a project together for a while, and it really was one of those eureka moments that had us realizing that the project would draw on our scholarly work on tourism in the Hawaii context, um, and that we could curate something that would have been um, that could critically deconstruct how and why the idea of Hawaii as a fantasy destination has such a tenacious hold on our imaginations and consequently shapes everyday life here. Um, but we also wanted to center the emerging place-based work that is growing, um, growing something else entirely outside of that. So initially, we wanted to speak back to the form and function of the guidebook, which has historically played such an enduring role in maintaining and reproducing this tourist imaginary of Hawaii. So our plan at first was to take the guidebook genre and deliberately pervert it in order to interrupt tourism's hold on Hawaii. 
However, as we worked with a guidebook form, we found the genre, the form, and conventions to be too fixed, too pervert, <laughs> and the audience too limited to tourists. We also realized um, once our contributors that we invited started to send their work in, that what we had was actually a collection of stories where people from Hawaii were able to tell their own understandings of place, um, stories of place, and of themselves in place in really profound ways that exceeded anything that a guidebook template could ever make room for. So once we started to look at the work our contributors were producing, our goal shifted away from subversion towards decoloniality and restoration, and our project moved from a perverse guidebook to a guide to decolonialism. So the detours takes on some of the conceits of the guidebook, but decenters the tourist gaze and it reorients relationships to place according to what contributes towards a consciousness and broader work of decolonization. Indeed, while we initially saw tourists as the first audience for this project, we've come to center residents of Hawaii, native and non-native alike, who as a result of settler colonialism may not themselves know the indigenous histories under the concrete and seal of tourism and development. So Detours is a decolonial guide that uses essays, personal reflections, artwork, and maps created by activists, artists, academics, and community members um, to, um, who are working to critique and dismantle settler colonialism in Hawaii and offer mo models for how to restore ea or the breath and sovereignty of the lahui the mm -hmm. aina the people so as a guide that contributes to decolonization it decenters the tourist gaze reorienting relationships to place according to those practices and ethics that contribute to the work of decolonization so while this project wholly supports the work of decolonization we didn't want to just critique and dismantle we felt it was equally important to offer an otherwise to the tourist's desire to consume and extract. Before I pick up the story where Bernadette has left off, I also want to extend my mahalo, my thanks to the invitation to be here with you all today. And just to um, acknowledge that I'm, I'm um, coming from my home, which is um, on the land of the Lekwungen people, also the historical territory of the Saanich, the Songhees, and the Squimalt people in the neighborhood, and my pronunciation is still in progress, of Suchenin, um, which uh, translates to becoming Saanich. So it's in a transition in a transition uh, neighborhood. So, um, so the guidebook. Once we started working with our contributors, not only did it shift our perspective about what we wanted to produce, moving away from the guidebook towards a decolonial guide, we were also, new questions started to emerge for us as well. And three questions in particular came forward for us. How do we frame this alternative decolonial encounter with Hawaii as something worth engaging in? Recognizing that part of the, whole, the imaginary that, can, that, you know, is over to, that over determines Hawaii is also about what people have come to desire. So how do we um, create a new, way of interacting with Hawaii that others could get excited about and come to want to engage with. Second, how does the complex history of Hawaii as a sovereign indigenous place guide the project's intervention? How do we actively push back against and disrupt this idea that Hawaii, um, Hawaii's inclusion in the United States is somehow settled? For many of us, it isn't. For many, for all of our contributors, that question is an unsettled question, right? So how do we also do that kind of work? And then finally, the third question was, how do we balance the story of aloha, of love uh, for place and for land without making it an open invitation or making clear that there are protocols for engaging or not engaging with certain places depending on one's positionality? How do we uninvite folks to Hawaii? Um, here we you know, have been thinking with and alongside um, the, uh, Hanani K. Tras, who recently passed away. And so her commitments and politics are all over this project. And we really see this as an extension of the work that she, um, that she did many years ago when she uninvited people to Hawaii. So how do we tell tourists that they do not get to have an open invitation to everywhere whenever they want it? 
right? Like, how do we do that work? So in these gatherings and exchanges with our contributors, we were able to critique each other's work and push each other to better articulate the kinds of stories we wanted to write that kind of, that helped us um, answer some of these questions. They also shared their own individual concerns. Um, again, something that we just was underlined over and over again is that how do we share stories about place to outsiders in a way that was appropriate, that didn't divulge more information than was appropriate to share? How do we do it that doesn't automatically get interpreted as being an invitation? Others had concerns about language and translation, and it really did force Bernadette and I to think as editors to think about the role of Olalo Hawaii of the Hawaiian language in the volume and take that up with the publishers, with Duke, and figure out a way to honor um, the politics of language and translation. And in thinking with our contributor, contributors, as Bernadette has already suggested, we realized that decolonization, the process and practices associated with land back, the dismantling of colonial structures, and the delinking from coloniality writ large was not enough. Rather, what our contributors were doing was critiquing and producing an otherwise. This otherwise in Olala Hawaii is the term that we, is ea. And on the screen is a quote by Noelani Gudir Ka'opua from her introduction to the um, edited collection, A Nation Rising. I think someone needs to mute their Run it down. Can you put it on mute? I think I can you mute yourself. That's okay, I took care of it. Apparently we have, you know, the God power, also known as host. <laughs> Um, anyway, so on the screen, I'm going to read the quote. Um, it reads, Ea is based on the experiences of people on the land, relationships forged through the process of remembering and caring for Vahipana, storied places. Ea is an active state of being. Ea cannot be achieved or possessed. It requires constant action day after day, generation after generation, end quote. And it's this sense, of, this sense that Ea breath sovereignty life, that it's a proactive process that we must engage in on a regular basis in order to sustain was really a sentiment that we wanted to underline and pair with decolonization. So it's not enough just to dismantle and deconstruct and delink, but we also were seeing folks working in their communities to rebuild and to offer up something anew. Now to Bernadette. Um, unmute yourself, my friend. Thank you. Uh, so this is sort of our rough um, uh, sketch of our table of contents in the book. Um, so as it as it is now, detours, um, critiques and dismantles, as Hoka mentioned, and it also offers examples of how folks with differential relationships to Hawaii contribute to the restoration of Ea. Um, so detours is organized into four thematic sections, but all of these have to do with place and the work of mapping and remapping. Um, so whether through telling genealogies of place rooted in aloha and aloha aina or elegies that mourn the interruptions of relations to place in history, such as in Vahipana, stories of place um, um, rooted in the work it takes to build relationship, relations to the aina um, in Hanalima, um, itineraries that reframe or instruct movements through space, which is huakai, towards for transformation, or ideas of place, belonging, and reciprocity that are not bound by location in part four. Um, the collection of contributors in the book, uh, of contributions in the book, are bound together in their decolonial vision and an understanding of sovereignty, of breath, of Ea, as requiring work and constant action day after day to bring it into being. So we wanted, to, uh, Hoko and I wanted to sort of um, wrap our discussion today, our initial sort of presentation with some examples of what um, some of the contributions to the book are. So I wanted to talk particularly about um, an existing huakai um, that is run by Auntie Terry Keiko Alani and Kyle Kajihiro um, that our book borrows its name from. So just to make sure everybody knows, a huakai is not an empty itinerary, but rather a journey that is defined by intention as very precise aims of moving people through a place and providing new ways of looking and interacting with some of the histories, the struggles and relationships that shape Hawaii. 
So Kyla and Auntie Terry, who are demilitarization advocates in Hawaii, created the DML tours uh, to expose the US military's social and environmental impacts of, in Hawaii, um, and to also unsettle it, its claims to the Hawaiian island, islands, as well as to revitalize wine place names and stories, um, and, and most of all, to lend support to Kanaka Mali resistance and resurgence initiatives. Um, so their huaka'i, um, and this is the short version, they have all day long ones, um, retraces one of the standard routes, which includes four main sites, the Yolani Palace, Halava Camp, uh, Halava Camp Smith, the Pearl Harbor War Memorial, and Hanukkahal Farm in Vayava. So at Iolani Palace, which you see here in this slide, they examine the Hawaiian kingdom, economic, geopolitical, and ideological factors driving the US backed overthrow of the monarchy and the prolonged military occupation of Hawaii. The palace provides a setting for telling stories of continuous Hawaiian resistance to annexation and the contemporary use of the palace as a gathering place and symbol of the Hawaiian independence movement. Um, Kyle and Auntie Terry's detour moves on to Camp Smith, the headquarters of the U.S. Pacific Command, where they discuss, where they discuss how Ke Avalao Opuuloa, known as Pearl Harbor, was crucial to the U.S. imperial ex uh, expansion across the Pacific. So standing at the head of the monstrous military octopus, they narrate the various manifestations of militarization and its impacts in Hawaii and the Pacific region. Here's a, a photo of Pearl Harbor. The Pearl Harbor Memorial, they recall Hawaiian place names and stories and critically interrogate the discourse of innocence and security and sacrifice that legitimizes and naturalizes the US presence in Hawaii. And finally, and I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of this because really it's fantastic, um, at Hanukkahal Farm, the tourist participants learn about an initiative to restore Hawaiian cultural knowledge and land use practices in the shadow of the ruined environment of Pearl Harbor, which is of course a super fun site. So this huaka'i narration concludes with thoughts about consequences of military policies, policies that implicate Hawaii in America's wars against peoples in distant lands and our responsibility as well to address both the impacts of militarization locally and abroad. And the pieces of from the book that I wanted to share were two examples from Karen Kosasa and Stan Tomito's um, Who's Paradise, a didactic detour project that features postcards. When I think about the kind of work a book like this can do, I instantly think of Karen and Stan's work. Um, they, so they produced a set of four postcards that raise awareness of major issues facing Hawaii, but using the icon of su tourism souvenirs, the postcard. In their artist statement, they write, quote, in the art world, didactic art is considered bad art because it dictates the meanings of an image and limits the viewer's participation in the meaning making process, end quote. What is so brilliant about this approach is that because Hawaii is so overdetermined by tourism and American nationalism, nothing less than didactic art can dislodge this dominant imaginaries. So as a teacher, I love using the postcards in the classroom because they allow students to think creatively about how to speak back against power. So two um, with two postcards uh, today, the first one on the screen is scene of the crime, 1893 overthrow of Hawaiian Kingdom. So it has it's a photograph of the Kamehameha statue that is in front of Ali'i Ali Olani Hale. The front image features the statue and keeping in mind that uh, this building is on King Street across the street and facing the Iolani Palace. The back of the postcard and then at the bottom are historical um, images from the overthrow on the bottom of the of the postcard on the front cover so you flip it over and the postcard describes the ugly history of overthrow that is often smoothed over by tourist material ali'i Ali olani hale is the building where the hawaiian hawaii supreme court is housed and kosasa and tamita ask quote can an, an american judicial system system ethically function within a colonized or occupied country? How is this possible? Whose paradise is this? End quote. I just love that, like, it's, they're such simple questions, but when I show, you know, talk about this in my, with my students in class, they're like, yeah, what does that mean, right? So I love that. The next slide is a warning flag. This image of a warning, warning flag and then the hotels in on Waikiki Beach 
Um, probably the most famous shoreline in the United States, although we would argue that we're not part of the United States, just saying. Um, explains the concept and history of settler colonialism and occupation in Hawaii. The back texts ask the tourists if they know about the overthrow in 1893 and about the illegal an annexation in 1898 and the illegality of the statehood in 1959. They then explain settler colonialism and occupation and link the US invasion of Iraq in 2003 to the ongoing occupation of Hawaii today. They go one step further by asking the tourists yet again another question, quote, shouldn't all visitors to Hawaii be aware of the tumultuous political background of this place, end quote. Pedagogically in asking this question, we we can then ask students to think about why visitors are not taught this history and what is sustained in maintaining amnesia about this history. In other words, these are postcards that would never be sold or you would never find them on the rack at the ABC stores. And if anybody's been to Hawaii, the ABC stores are the convenience stores at every on every corner in Waikiki. But they do the work of unsettling notions of paradise that tourists and some residents to be sure hold to be true by inserting the history of US empire into the visual lexicon of tourism, Karen and Stan's postcards do the work of decolonial refusal, turning the postcard into a text of unsettling pro provocation. So we'll end here um, to leave room for questions, but the book itself ends with the words, ole ipau, the work is not finished. The aloha, the long path of decolonization is one worth following, but it takes work and commitment. The contributions to detours and their work reminds us that we are all following diverse ways, um, following in the footsteps of people who came before us and that we are moving the cause forward in diverse ways according to our individual gifts, relationships, perspectives, and efforts. Just as colonization, capitalism, heteropatriarchy continue to evolve and shape shift, appropriating our efforts, co-opting our people and slowly killing us, we need decolonizing practices that are creative, adaptive, innovative, and ongoing if indigenous peoples are going to get out in front of the colonizing machine and hold firm to what Brandy Nalani McDougall calls, quote, the chattering winds of hope. So with that, ole ipau, aloha aina.